my name is Konstantin Zakashansky. I'm a gynecological oncologist at Mount Sinai Health System. I'm a director of minimal invasive surgery for the health system as well as, a, as, well as director of gynecological oncology at Mount Sinai West. Um, when we uh, think about gynecological malignancies, we typically refer to five uh, different sites, and those are uh, ovaries, uterine, uh, uterine corpus or uterus, um, uterine cervix, vagina, and vulva. So the ovaries are bilateral, uh, small walnut-shaped organs that are located on each side of the uterus that are connect connected to the, uh, to the uterus um, uh, through the fallopian tubes. Uh, a uterus is a pear-shaped organ that's uh, whose primary function for childbearing. Um, and the cervix is the uh, most distal end of the uterus that is, um, uh, extends into the vagina. The vagina is a muscular tubular structure that connects the, the uterus and the cervix with the external genitalia and vulva. Uh, cancers can be developed, can potentially arise in any of those sites. Uh, you can have vulvar cancer, vaginal cancer, cervical cancer, uterine cancer, and, and ovarian and the fallopian tube cancer. So those uh, are um, five uh, subtypes of malignancies that are typically referred as gynecological cancers. The symptoms uh, primarily are based on the type and the location of a specific malignancy. For ovarian uh, cancer, abdominal bloating, uh, pressure, pelvic pain, um, fluid and abdomen is one of the common uh, presentations. For the uterine cancer, bleeding, uh, prolonged bleeding during the menstrual cycle or bleeding between uh, periods, um, excessive bleeding are very common. Uh, for cervical cancer, uh, pelvic pressure, uh, back pain, um, again, bleeding between the periods, bleeding after intercourse is a common presenting symptom. The same uh, is for vaginal cancer. For vulvar cancer, external irritation, um, spontaneous bleeding, uh, pressure symptoms are common. The risk factors, um, there are some commonalities. The most common risk factor for all gynecologic malignancies except for cervical cancer would be age. Uh, the specific risk factor for cervical cancer uh, would be exposure to an HPV virus or having HPV virus, uh, previous history of abnormal pap smears, uh, smoking, uh, immunocompromised state, um, the factors that could potentially lead to cancer of the uterus are related to um, exposure to estrogen. So whether it's uh, intake of estrogen without progesterone, early menarche, late menopause, um, extra weight, diabetes, hypertension, those are the risk factors for um, uh, typical, typical, typically related to the uterine cancers. There are some genetic predispositions that can uh, put one uh, at risk of developing uterine cancer, specifically Lynch syndrome that's also associated with colon cancer. For ovarian cancer, um, common risk factor once again is age, uh, as well as uh, genetic predisposition, um, BRCA mutations. There are a number of genes that have been currently identified that put uh, women at risk of developing ovarian cancer. Personal history of um, breast cancer um, would be a risk factor as well. General recommendation for prevention of ovarian cancer uh, or any gynecological cancer would be maintaining healthy, healthy lifestyle, uh, um, watching your diet, exercise, and getting enough sleep. Uh, it's important to see a gynecologist, a primary care physician on a regular basis. So if there are any new symptoms um, that may be related to gynecological cancer um, arise that can be um, worked up in a timely manner. Um, um, doing regular pap smears, physical examination is just as important. Um, there are no uh, sort of specific catch-up 
vaccination for women after 26. The general recommendation for HPV vaccine at the uh, is um, age of uh, given to girls and boys at the age as early as nine, uh, and by the age 11 and 12. Uh, they should be administered. Um, someone who did not get the vaccine uh, by the age of 26 can be uh, given um, additional doses or can be revaccinated. After the age of 26, um, the general recommendation is uh, based on a shared clinical decision making. Uh, so that decision is based on the specific risk factors. Um, of a specific uh, patient. So it's related to potential new exposure to the HPV virus. The HPV vaccines are most effective when they are given prior to HPV exposure. Um, once the patient's been exposed to HPV, um, additional potential benefit of additional dosing or uh, in, entire new cycle of vaccination um, may or may not be beneficial depending on uh, specific risk factors. As I mentioned, having new sex partners, uh, potential uh, immunocompromised state, um, particular um, uh, other uh, risk factors related to the, the specific behaviors uh, um, May uh, rec may put you in the category where the H additional HPV vaccination is recommended, but in generally, um, it's something that should be decided between the physician and the patient on the, each particular case. Um, it's once once again, so this would depend on the specific circumstance. Um, if uh, there is a increased risk of uh, new exposure to uh, HPV virus. It's something that should definitely be considered. And uh, FDA uh, did give an approval for additional HPV uh, vaccination up to age of uh, 45, but those decisions are made in, uh, in the case-by-case -case basis. So again, shared clinical decision-making is recommended in those circumstances. Um, Absolutely, and this all depends on the stage and the specific location of the cancer. If the cancer, uh, let's go through all five cancers. If, uh, if the cancer confined to a small area in the vulva that can be excised, it would uh, in no way affect someone's fertility. The same goes for the uh, vaginal lesion. Um, in the case of a cervical cancer, once again, excisional procedure in some circumstances at the very early stages of cervical cancer uh, can be performed and the fertility uh, can be maintained. Um, in case of uh, uterine cancer, there are circumstances where uh, uterine cancer can be treated hormonally and uh, once again, fertility is preserved. And the same goes for the ovarian or fallopian tube cancer when the uh, cancer is just confined to over one ovary or to the fallopian tube, that ex excision alone of that area is curative in certain circumstances, circumstances and the fertility is maintained. In other cases, when um, the cancer presents in advanced stages uh, and that would require more radical excision, um, obviously if the entire uterus or both ovaries are removed in that circumstance, the fertility cannot be preserved. The same goes for uh, certain treatments that are required um, once the cancer is diagnosed and the patient underwent um, extensive radiation or prolonged course of chemotherapy. Uh, in many of those cases, fertility can be compromised. Most of GYN cancers are diagnosed on a physical examination or uh, imaging obtained based on patient symptomatology. Once there is a suspicion of um, gynecological cancer, the patients should see your, uh, their uh, gynecologist who may um, either do a biopsy based on the physical examination, would be cervical biopsy, endometrial biopsy, vulvar biopsy that would uh, give us a definitive diagnosis of cancer or additional workup with the ultrasound or a CAT scan uh, or MRI may be required followed by surgical intervention that would lead to establishing definitive diagnosis. Um, 
but majority of um, diagnosis are made on the combination of patient symptoms and additional workup that's done by the physician. Um, for the majority of early um, gynecological cancer, uh, surgical intervention uh, is appropriate as an initial step in treatment. Uh, for more advanced stages, in addition to surgery or in layer of surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, uh, or combination of both may be required. If one suspects that they may have gynecological cancer, they should seek out consultation with their gynecologist, their primary care physician, and possibly <clears throat> with a gynecologic oncologist or the doctors who specialize in treating and diagnosing and manage, managing uh, gynecological malignancy, the gynecological oncologists. 